Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and this is an induction hob. I don't know if that translates internationally. This is a cooker, a stovetop, an induction stovetop. This is a thing for making saucepans hot. I'm very much hoping that an induction hob, an induction cooker, whatever you choose to call it in your locale, doesn't need much of an introduction. In terms of what it is and what it does, I mean, it's a replacement for cooking. We'll see how it works when we get inside, but I guess at this point, even if you've never cooked a meal yourself, you've at least seen someone cooking a meal. Ooh, security talks, how will we ever get inside? This has been plugged in and used reasonably recently, so I will also be taking the utmost care around any capacitors which look unfriendly. This big fan on the bottom, uh, I'm pretty sure is dual function. I think it helps to keep the electronics cool as it's running, but is also used to cool the ceramic, the top surface. Although the top surface doesn't inherently get hot on its own, of course it is pressing up against a saucepan or a frying pan or whatever you're cooking in, which gets hot itself, so it conducts a lot of heat back down. And after you turn this off using the tactile switches on the front, the fan still runs afterwards and will warn you that the surface is hot so you don't then put your hands on it. It's a nice little operational touch. There's much less in here than I thought there was going to be. So top half, we've got the, they call it ceramic in the instructions. Could be plastic compounds, could be glass, could be a composite. I, I'm happy with ceramic. Board on the front is going to be where all your buttons are. So let's whip that out nice and quickly. Very interesting, they've got this Feels like thermal grease, probably thermal grease, a thermal interface material in the center, because of course the magnetic field in the center is gonna broadly cancel itself out, so there's no point in placing it there. But you want to read the temperature, surface temperature, really quickly. So I'm guessing these are thermistors, maybe a thermal fuse, so that this thing doesn't cook itself into oblivion, which is surprisingly easy to do with saucepans. Have you ever seen the experiment, I don't suggest anybody does it themselves, but if you put a saucepan on a heat source full of water and you put a same saucepan on a very similar heat source with nothing in it, the one with water will obviously sit there and boil, which means the metals and the equipment don't go above 100 degrees Celsius, of course, but the one with nothing there will of course just get hotter and hotter and hotter till it oxidizes and burns away. It's very interesting to see it protected like that. And you can do a mini experiment where you can fill a balloon with water and hold it over a candle flame or a lighter and the balloon won't pop. It seems so counterintuitive. So control PCB at the front, tactile switches, LEDs, seven segment plus one, eight segment display, two character, simple one layer LED, single layer PCB with a handful of jumpers just to get across. Ooh, unused header. Reset five volt ground, PA1 and PAO. Ooh, look, it's I squared C. So this must be a bus addressable IO controller, which is an East Soft IC. A very sensible way to make that, nice. And that is the top half, the cooker half. It's not actually opaque. This is ever so slightly transparent, translucent, I guess, technically. So the next big obvious feature is the, <laughs> the reason we're here, the induction coil. And that's a huge conductor. I mean, those are probably two square millimeter, something in that kind of ballpark. And these will be ceramic. So this will be one continuous coil. They aren't conducting between uh, revolutions. But that's, that's what turns the bottom of your saucepan into a series of mini electric circuits with big resistors in it. And all that does is oscillate really fast magnetic fields, which induces heat into the bottom of the pan or cooking medium, I guess. Uh, I, I've got to be honest, I don't really see the benefit of this aluminium plate.
I mean, the rest of it is all just plastic, unless they're worried about uh, the plastics becoming soft when they heat up a little bit, and this is just there for an extra bit of frigidity. It's about the only reason I've got. So, coil. Is the coil on connectors? Yes, it is. Lovely. And even whatever these are in the center are on connectors as well. Everything's on connectors. What a wonderfully modular little piece of kit. And even the induction coil is on screw terminals. Just a big magnet. I just love the idea that you can cook using magnets. That seems so sci-fi to me. Look, they've also put the mains power lead on connectors as well. I really have thought of everything. Also, the, the fact they've got a ferrite choke on here tells you a lot about the power quality coming out of this because you're using those high frequency switched magnets. They've got to be causing havoc for, for power quality, power factor. There's lots of advantages to induction cooking, but downstream power quality isn't going to be one of them. So there is a 12 amp fuse at the back. 250 volt, 12 amp. 12 amps a strange rating. Yeah, I mean, this is rated at 2,100 watts, which at 220 volts is going to be just as like nine and a half amps, something along those lines. Why would you feel the need to put a 12 amp fuse in there? Like, I guess 12 is, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe 10 amp with a bit of inrush current was a little bit too close to the actual spec. And if 12 seems niche, I guess 11 is really niche. I will say though, so far, everything we've seen is of a reasonable build quality. It's not going to win any competitions or anything, but there is nothing in here that screams, I'm a budget saving, which is a good thing. So back to posi bit. Let's see if we can get this board loose. Mm, this is the board I want to be careful of. Mm, nice big traces. There you go. Bottom plastic with the fan in which I'm just going to leave. It's going to be a DC fan. Whoop -de -doo. That is the biggest like solder string I've ever seen. Just on the bottom corner of this board, you've got this, and I'd almost say that was a hair, but it's definitely shiny and metallic. Like an artifact out of the wave soldering that got included. Okay, so I've had a little bit of fun sort of looking at the parts on here, trying to work out exactly how it works. Incoming power goes through capacitors, and this is a relay, so that's switching the high power through to the induction circuitry. I'll come back to that later. Otherwise, it just powers this little bridge rectifier. You can see four diodes down here, and you've got a couple of transformers. Uh, and that feeds like the electronics side of it. So if we flip this over, still being very careful around all these caps, uh, we have one 8-bit microcontroller on the bottom and it's not hugely powerful. It doesn't have a ton of IO, but it does operate at a decent speed. And if we trace this out from up here, you can follow the traces round to the uh, I2C interface, which runs down that wire and talks to this IC, which is an East Soft, microcontroller. It's pretty basic. And I, I, I kind of like that. I don't really know why, but there you go. And I also like the fact that they've actually used full-size tactile switches and full-size LEDs rather than trying to cheap out using tactile domes or a membrane type switch. It definitely feels better to use, although I will criticize, even that's a push, I will say when you're pushing these little tactile switch buttons. The plastic here doesn't feel great. These little, you know, I can picture these blister buttons failing and letting dirt and grease in, which when you're cooking, it's not great. When it's around water and moisture ingress, not great. So talking about the power size, we go through this inductor and we go through the IGBTs and we've got the control circuitry. Now, I think essentially you charge up this capacitor uh, which is uh, 0.3 microfarad, 630 volt AC, 50 kilohertz, and it specifically states 50 kilohertz cap there. And I have a suspicion that you're charging that up and that's actually what we're using to drive the coil. So this will then 
send an um, alternating magnetic frequency out at somewhere between 24 and 50 kilohertz are the frequencies typically used for induction cooking. In theory, both of those are above human hearing, so you wouldn't hear directly the sound of the magnetic field whining or anything, but you can hear sort of secondary noises and things going on. And that circuitry is brought on by this relay, so this side of the board is more or less completely dead when it's not operating. I'm kind of impressed at how simple this is. Electronically and physically, how simple it is to cook with magnets. And don't get me wrong, the, the design and the principle has been worked on. Because you imagine this is like um, the worst transformer in history. So this is the primary side winding and the pan is the secondary side, but the pan is more or less in dead short. Um, because it's producing eddy currents in the bottom of the pan. But it, because of the skin effect of different materials, and the skin effect, I mean, if you imagine that you're moving electrons through a material and they're all negative, so they're all going to try and spread out from each other because they don't want to be near other negative charges. Um, and they all accumulate in most cases like around the skin of a, a cable, which is why you don't see massive cables. Uh, you tend to see smaller cables in parallel when you're doing it with high current, certainly with AC anyway. Um, but the skin effect is also uh, an issue for the power transfer in different cookware. And different compounds of steel and iron have different skin effect coefficients and different resistances. So different pans of different makeup will perform totally different on induction, which is just crazy as not even something I would have considered other than the binary will it work or will it not you've also got the effective electronic properties or electrical properties of the material that pan's made of so I, I'm very pleased to say actually I'm impressed with the build quality I'm impressed with the design of the system I'm impressed with how well it works and yeah I mean I, I have natural gas in my kitchen at the moment but Upgrading to induction hobs, I think that's an upgrade I'd be willing to make as and when it needs to happen. So on top of this teardown, I've actually run through some testing with this as well to see how efficient and how effective induction cooking is versus a few other techniques. If you would like to see that or you've got ideas for your own teardowns, please head over to the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the electronics inside. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.